Hi folks, this is question 8. So the first part is normal distribution. So uh, you don't have to draw out the diagram if you, uh, if you understand it. But it's always good to show it anyway. So the mean here is 3.87. So what this means on the diagram then, so the online word game involves trying to guess five letter word in as few attempts as possible for this game. There, so in Ireland, player scores approximately normally, so with a mean of 3.87. So that means on average it took players about 3.87 attempts. So most people either were around three or four attempts. That's what it means. And a standard deviation of 0 0.36. So that means it goes out by 3.8 or sorry, 0 0.36 each time. So, uh, you know that mu is 0.87, and you know that uh, the standard deviation is 0 0.36. So a player selects at random point, find the probability that he has a score of less than 3.5. So we're gonna to have to get a Z score here. So Z score is X minus mu over standard deviation so uh, that would be 3 so 3.5 minus 3.87 over 0.36 so we get minus 1.027 so what that means so that's the z score on the normal distribution then Right, so our Z score then is, around, is somewhere in the minuses. Now it's asking us, find the probability that the player has a score of less than 3.5. So what we want is we want the area to the left of that. So we want the area here. Now because it's a minus, we have, we have to find the area of the other side, which is here. So we want that area. But remember, if we get a Z score for, for value here it'll find all of that so we want to do one minus or you can just remember when it's a minus anyway you're always going to be doing one minus the probability of z being less than or equal to 1.027 so you're looking up your z score for 1.027 anyway so you're looking it up in the log table and then you do one minus so we get zero point Eight four eight five, and we just look up the z score. So we have to do one take away that. So if you do that in the calculator, then you get zero point one five one five. So that's the probability then. Right. So for part B then. So. So there's a random sample of 600, or sorry, uh, 64 Galway players. So N is 64. So the population here is 64. So they have a score of 3.74. Uh, so based on the local news, so use a standard deviation of 0 0.36. So 0 0.36. 95% confidence interval. Um, so that's going to be this formula. So it's, Z score is 1.96 for 95% intervals. So we're putting in the values then. Zero point three four when you put that in over sixty four. Sorry, it's just over root sixty four. The root is still outside, so you can just get eight on the bottom there. So, or you can just put it on the calculator. But remember, you've got two values, so you're going to have a plus and a minus. 
So you get 3.618 and 3.8284. So that's the confidence interval then. Right, so we have to do a hypothesis test then at the 5% level of significance. So look back up here, the mean score was 3.87. So what we want, so our null hypothesis then will be that it's going to be 3, that the mean is 3.87. So based on our new one then, one is that it's not actually going to be equal to 3.87 so we're going to use our new mean to just see if, if it's within the confidence interval so we worked out the the confidence interval for the value of 3.74 so that was in between those two then, yeah. So in between 3.6518 and 3.8284. So we want to see if our, our if the mean that we had at the start um is in between that confidence interval. So uh 3.87 it so it's not in between it because you'll see there it's bigger than that one. Bigger than the, um the upper value of the confidence interval so therefore we're going to reject the null hypothesis and then our explanation is because um, it's outside uh, the confidence interval so you should probably write out the full sentence there. So that 3.87 is outside of the confidence interval. So you can see that the Galway players are a little bit better because the mean score of, of all the players in Ireland is a little bit higher than uh, the confidence interval. So the people, the Galway players get it done a little bit, a few less, or less, a less mean number of attempts. Right, so part C then, it's asking us a confidence interval in reverse pretty much. So 35% uh, of the sample said that they play it. So that's going to be our sample proportion here. That's 35 over 100 because it's 35%. Or you can call it 0 0.35. So that's our P hat. So if you think, take the the formula for confidence interval of 95% and just put in that into it and then the answer has to be these two so that's uh, well 26.5 is 0 0.265 and 43.5 is 0 0.435 so if we just take the positive one here to get that as a confidence as the upper value of the confidence interval you would have had to do this you'd have had to do 0 0.35 plus 1.96 uh the root of and it's it's going to be 0 0.35 times 1 minus 0 0.35 all over n and n is the variable here n is what we're looking for because we actually don't know how many teenagers were surveyed so that's have to be zero point to all of that would have to be zero point four three five. So it's just working it out from this then you have to just use you have to just move stuff across the equal sign and try and figure out what n is. So you can move over, move over to zero point three five and then divide by one point nine six anyway to get to get those over. So we get seventeen over three nine two 
when you moved all these things over, so I'm just doing that quickly. So that's equal to root um, so 0 0.35 times 0 0.65. all over n and then we'll have to square both sides so you'll have to square both sides and then uh, you can cross multiply and solve for n so I've got it done here so when you when you do that you'll get 121 when it's rounded off so that's your value for n and so it's just using it's just moving things across the equal sign and solving it's not actually that hard, it's just using the confidence interval formula. Alright, so next part. So I'll just make this a little bit bigger here. So we're just going to be putting in <coughs> everything. So all I have to do to uh yeah, so you're just going to do multiply that by that to get this here. So you're going to get 288000. And then, so this is a probability tree. So if that's 0 0.8 there, so that and this here have to both add up to 1 all the time. The probabilities have to add up to 1. So therefore, 0 0.8, so that has to be 0 0.2 here. So you're going to do 0 0.2 multiplied by 360 so you get 72,000 then I'm going to take the 288,000 and I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.9 to get the next one so we get 2920 and then down here we're going to do 0 7200 multiplied by 0 0.25 sorry that should be 72,000 so we get 18,000 here. Now this is 0 0.2 down here, so that means that has to be 0 0.8 again. Same as before, and then up here is the same, so 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. Because uh, the chance of winning and losing is still going to be the same thing. So we get 207360 uh, there, and you multiply 259200 multiplied by 0 0.8, and we get 14400 there, multiply, multiply 18,000 by 8, 0.8, and then multiply it by 0 0.2. And you get three six zero zero. Right, so uh, the last box then is a little bit trickier. Uh, so you have to look look back at the question. So you see here that um, so ninety percent of players who win the game <coughs> will play it again the following day. So ninety percent of players. So if you win, um, you'll play it again. So you can see that if you, when they win the probability here, so it's 0 0.9 again, it was before, but it was filled in for you last time. <coughs> and here, these people won as well down here. So it's going to be 0 0.9. And then the other one is going to be the 0, or yes, yeah, it could be 0 0.25, because 25% of players who do not win the game will play it again the following day. So 0 0.25, because that follows a loss. So you're just multiplying again then. So we get one eight six six two four. And we get one two nine six oh. Then one two nine six oh again. And nine. So that's the diagram filled in. That's all you have to do for the first part. So
so uh, very last part then so one person picked at random from those who played the game in all three days so find the probability that this person lost on the 1st of June or the 2nd of June or on both uh, so it's just probabilities here that we're looking at really so the way I look at this then is it's going to be 1 minus the probability that they won all the time so 1 minus probability that won um, every time so the only place where they won every time is if you go right across the top so um, if you won here and then won here again uh, yeah so if you won on both of them so everywhere else you lose at least once so um, yeah so this one here means that they lost on the second day this one here means that they lost on the first day and this one here means that they lost on the first day as well so everywhere else involves losing apart from the top very top row there so it's only these people who um won all the time who won every time so that's one eight six sixty four So uh, the probability of winning every time is 1 over the total. So the total it means you have to add them all up. So 188, 186624, 12960, Right, so when you work all that out, then you put all that in the calculator together, and you'll just get the final probability. So, over 5929. So we can just leave it as a fraction like that then. So that's the probability then. And then that's all for that question.